first of all, reflections. How, what's it like going from BBL back to Shield now? And what were the celebrations like? Oh yeah, look, it's been a, a pretty quick turnaround. Um, oh no, the, the celebrations were terrific as they should be. Um, one of our key values is, is to be able to celebrate success and uh, we're able to do that accordingly over the last few days. But uh, yeah, we're, we're very quickly back to the reality of um, back into black and gold and, and getting ready to um, continue the, the Shield and, and one day cup season. So um, it was good fun. It was, it was pretty brief and uh, it's been back to work. Uh, oh, Mitch Marsh is off-field captain and um, was very well organised. How do you get the uh, I think we, we spoke about it briefly this morning, just around uh, the fact that we've got a great opportunity uh, with how well the squad has played in the first half of the season to, um, to go deep in, in both the competitions that we've still got to play. So uh, there's a heap to play for. Uh, I think there's a real competition for spots at the moment uh, and I think that's keeping everyone on their toes so um, we're still working through exactly what the squad looks like for Adelaide but uh, yeah there's certainly some tight competition at the moment. We're still working through it but will we see Sean back? We will yeah no really excited to, to name Sean uh, back uh, to lead the side he's um, it's been a long wait for him uh, to get back out there but uh, he's super excited to be uh, on the plane tomorrow. Uh, oh look, it's it's exciting the opportunity that uh, presents in front of us, and uh, there's a long way to go yet, um, and we we fully understand that. But uh, again, uh, if we can continue to get multiple contributions from guys, if we can continue to play the same uh, positive brand of cricket that we have done all season in all formats of the game, well then we'll give ourselves every opportunity. So uh, it's about preparing really well over the next couple of days, and then uh, yeah, obviously on the plane to Adelaide tomorrow, and um, get stuck in on Friday. Yeah, look, you, you get someone of the calibre of Sean Marsh back into your top seven and um, unfortunately that means someone else is going to miss out. Uh, and that's that's just the reality of uh, our sport and, and where our group's at at the moment. But uh, I think what we've always tried to pride ourselves on is a group mentality and a squad mentality. And uh, we've had some great opportunities for a few of our younger guys to play in the, in the first half of the season. But uh, we're starting to get a few more experienced names and, and faces back. So um, nice problems to have, people keep telling me. Uh, yeah, I oh, look, I'm... I'm a big fan of Ashton uh, as, as captain of the Scorchers and working really closely with him over the last couple of seasons. Uh, his, his maturity and his leadership and the way that he goes about it uh, is a huge part of why we've been successful. Um, I did read that Aaron Finch has retired today and um, hopefully Ashton's name's being bandied about as, as a potential uh, replacement to lead Australia because uh, I think he'd do a wonderful job. Absolutely, yeah, I think he's playing well enough. I think his form, particularly this season, uh, he's playing well enough to be selected in the team. And if he's in the team, I think he's one of the best captains in the country. What is it about uh, I think there's a number of things. I think tactically he's very astute. I think he has that ability to be able to think on his feet, uh, something that you really need in T20 cricket. Uh, but also the ability to instill a great deal of confidence into his team and, and, and into his bowling group in particular. Uh, he's always well thought, uh, he's always well planned, um, but his ability to, to adapt on the run, I, I think is really special. Oh, no doubt. Uh, and again, I don't know if it's been missed at all, but even what he was able to say to Nick Hobson after he ran him out, um, he just turned to him and said, mate, you're a gun, you've got this. Um, so that leadership in that moment when he could rightfully be a bit annoyed, um, but to instill that confidence into young Nick Hobson after uh, a pretty bad mix-up, um, that, that's the sort of leadership that we're starting to see from Ashton. How do you feel he's grown since he last appeared on the international stage? <coughs> oh, he's matured, um, no doubt, in a, in a lot of ways. I think his game is, is really well set up now. I know he's worked a lot on his, on his power hitting and his ability to finish games. And um, again, you, you look at most T20 competitions in the world and it's your top three that are scoring the bulk of the runs and it's a really specific role to, to come in and be able to finish the innings and I think the way that he's been able to do that um, and do it 
multiple times and, and under real pressure. Uh, I think that's been an evolution in his game. Um, but yeah, just his maturity and, and the way that he goes about leading this group, I think he's grown immensely over the last couple of years. And I guess what we touched on earlier, coming from completely outside the squad, going straight into the captaincy role, what is it about his traits that, that make him just ideal for that sort of smooth transition? Oh, he never he never seems um, flustered. Uh, he, he always looks calm whenever the, the cameras pan to him. He's uh, I'm sure there's a bit going on internally, but uh, he, he's always got a very calm and, and cool exterior. And I think that rubs off on the rest of our team and um, probably the coaching staff as well at times. But uh, yeah, look, uh, I think he has all the attributes attributes to be a really successful international captain. And 50 over cricket, would you like to see him back on the international stage there? I would, yeah. Um, oh, look, he, <coughs> he's a really important part of our, our Marsh Cup squad. and has led uh, the team for a couple of years now in Mitch Marsh's absence and, and does a wonderful job in, in that space as well. And, and again, is a big reason why we've um, had success and, and, and have started this season really well too. And, and Red Bull cricket, it has been a while since you played for WA. Yes. The squad's loaded, so is there any room at all? He's just formed his life. But. He is, and, and he's gone back and, and made runs in second eleven cricket and, and done the things that we've asked him to. Um, but again, he's in a, in a log jam with a number of players to um, uh, try and get selected in our Shield team. And um, yeah, look, he's another one of those players who is making my job more difficult. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, pr proud of, of everyone in, involved in WA cricket. I think I get incredibly well supported from our board to Christina, our CEO, to Cade, uh, our high performance manager. But I'm also surrounded by some wonderful staff and wonderful coaches that make my job a lot easier. Um, and I think we work incredibly well as a group to run a, a, a program that I think our players love being a part of and uh, that what we've been able to create over the last couple of years has been something really special and, and for that I'm, I'm really proud of and, and I guess the results are uh, a culmination of, of all of that so um, hopefully a couple more to go this year. On the national team captaincy, could you have two candidates for that? Would you say Skip and Mitchell Marshall as well? Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah, I'll happily name any West Australian and throw their name up into the mix. But I um, oh look, Mitch has got leadership um, uh, experience. Uh, he's part of the, the Australian T20 team. He's, he's an integral part of it, uh, and I think that's important. So, um, yep, very happy to throw his name up there as well. What sort of a, um, a threat, I guess, does South Australia present later this week? Oh, they're a good side. Uh, there's no doubt about it. I think they've got a really strong bowling attack um, and, and so we're going to have to bat particularly well uh, over at Adelaide Oval. We're not exactly sure what we're going to get conditions wise but I think we'll be able to take a squad across that will be able to um, play well in, in whatever gets presented to us. So uh, yeah, they're, they're a team on the rise. That they're, uh, their bowling attack in particular is dangerous so we're going to have to play well. Uh, like I say to the boys every time we front up for, for Western Australia, we're going to have to play our best, and, and that's what we'll be concentrating on trying to do. What about the availability of the all-rounders? I mean, Marcus Salinas has flagged that he wants to play some shield cricket at the back end, Mitch Marsh uh, potentially a little later on. Is there a chance to maybe rest him out of Harden? You've got Hilton as well. Um, how do you weigh all that up in the next couple of weeks? Yeah, well, you'll have to have the conversation about resting hard. Um, he's, uh, no, look, oh, again, there, there's some really nice availability coming up and that's just our job is to try and navigate through that and, and exactly what that looks like. There's a one day white ball series in India post the test series and I imagine a number of those guys who you just mentioned will be a part of that and, and will miss the back end of the season. So until we've got all that information we'll, we'll keep all options open and see how we go. Do you have any idea of Marcus's availability between sort of now, he's not played his last game in the early last night and then the series, are you expecting him to be available? He's on the plane right now, so I'll let you know in a few hours. Yeah, he's going well. Uh, it's, a, it's a slow recovery, so it's a frustrating one for him. But I think what we have done is now that we've got all the information around that hamstring is just make sure that uh, we're a bit more conservative and, and making sure that he's 100% fit, ready to go. So uh, he won't be involved, obviously, in Adelaide. Uh, we go to Tasmania after that, and I think that'll be line ball. But again, we'll get an update over the next week or so. Yes, yes, no, it's, it's, it's the hamstring, so no, uh, fortunately the heel is good and, and we just got to get the hammy right. It's been to me off the platform, it must be boring just 
Oh, absolutely. Uh, because I think we've all seen when he's fit and available, the, the impact that he's been able to have. And uh, I know he had high hopes going into this summer about not only playing really well for Western Australia and the Scorchers, but hopefully pushing his case to play international cricket again. And so while that's been put on the back burner a little bit, uh, there's still a lot of cricket to be played. And, and we know that a fully fit Jai Richardson will, will have a great impact when he's back on the field. No worries.